Hiya guys, just a quickie, follow up from yesterday. As you know, yesterday I did my uh, annual roundup um, and basically my best of and least favourites of the year. And a few of you have messaged me, both in the comments and privately, and said, why didn't I include this? The Qatari Spitfire Mark 1A mid. Um, it's a kit I received um, kindly from Qatari and I'm apparently on their reviewers list, so look out for more stuff coming from them. Uh, I was convinced last night when I did my sort of roundup before I did the video, um, I thought of Qatari, but I was convinced that kit, I should have checked, but I, could, I was convinced that kit came out in December. Um, I actually reviewed it in May. I got that kit in May. So I mistook May for, I mean, I can understand it if I said, I thought January was December, but May, God blame me, I must be losing it. So um, things have sort of changed a little bit. So I just thought I'd do a quick little refresher just to slot this kit in because it is definitely one of my favourite releases ever. Saying that I haven't built it, so I don't, you know, I can't really say it's my best build or my favourite build or lovely plastic like that because I don't know. But I really should get on with it. But you can get burnt out on too many Spitfires. So basically, um, my favourite release this year it's still the Hong Kong models A20, and in second place, it's the Qatari Spitfire. If I built this, um, because the A20 is up there because it just goes together beautifully, the instructions are nice, it's pretty accurate, it's lovely, lovely, lovely kit. This, I haven't built yet, so obviously, if I had built it, it may well go into first place, but I haven't, so that's going to go in second. Um, and then when it comes down to the best engineering, I've put Qatari Spitfire as number one. Because I put Meng Chieftain as being number one because it's such a beautifully crisply moulded kit that goes together so well. And it's really, really nice. Um, as does the um, the, the, uh, the Hong Kong models A20. But that Meng Chieftain really is a lovely, lovely model. And I think anybody could build that kit. Anybody at any level. I don't think they struggle with it at all. Um, but number one for the best engineer is the Qatari Spitfire without doubt. You know, raised panel lines, uh, sorry, raised panel lines, raised rivets, recessed panel lines, you know, no riveting where it's not required. The fabric covering is absolutely beautiful. Um, the way they've got the model designed so that the, the, the spine goes in a separate piece so you don't have to start rubbing down next to rivets and everything. It's really, really beautiful. A lot of people moan that it hasn't got an engine. Um, if it had an engine, the engine would have to be undersized so the cowlings would fit. And people would say, the engine's too small. If they put an engine in there that was actual full size, like Airfix have done with the 124th, it becomes extremely difficult to get the cowlings to fit. And then people will, did you see that? And then people will say, the cowlings don't fit, so they can't win. So the best thing to do is just bloody don't put one in there and let the aftermarket deal with it, which is exactly what's happened. A company called Fishkopf over on um, Facebook, they're doing a resin complete engine detail set for it. So it will just replace the front end of the kit. So that's really good. Um, so now the Chieftain's gone into second place and in third place is the ICM Tarhe because that again is a beautifully engineered kit. Best instructions, Qatari Spit without a doubt. They're wingnut wings, let's face it, they are wingnut wings. All the colour callouts, all the references, the photographs, you know, you don't need any reference material to build this kit. It's all in the instructions and it's the same with all the wingnut wings kits. They are, I mean, I just wish wingnut wings had bought out that Lancaster because the instruction manual would be a Bible for Lancaster fans. Um, so yeah, and then second place I've got Zukimori because again, their instructions are also absolutely amazing. I only thought of them while I was actually talking to you yesterday. So um, yeah, Zukimori, absolutely amazing. And then in third place, Gas Patch, along with Copper State models, because again, they're really, really nice. Um, do -do 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 -do, what else has changed here? Best packaging, company I completely forgot about yesterday, Trumpeter. Um, you know, we've got a couple of old kits there from Trumpeter. They have for years given us amazing packaging that, that works really well. I don't I don't recall ever having a Trumpeter kit with a damaged, bent, missing whatever part. They're absolutely amazing. Um, you know, the clear parts are wrapped in foam. The delicate parts are wrapped in foam. Everything's individually bagged. Yet it's not great for the environment, but it's great for the, for the, for the model getting here. And packaging is a very important part of the kit, I believe. You know, poor packaging is, you know, it just ruins the model, doesn't it? Um, and then I've got the gas patch resin as being the best uh, packaging um, in the best packaging category, because as we know, I did that 3D printed kit and the, the, the packaging was absolutely amazing. And um, 
Airfix have also um, gone in there as well. Their packaging of their the Sea King and the Gannet and you know other kits they've done. Really, really nice, solid, strong boxes. Um, individually bagged sprues in most cases, and sprues made to the size of the box, and it all rattling around and everything. Having said that, their 124 scale Spitfire, which was made in the UK, um, the package it was also packaged in the UK, and the packaging on that is bloody awful. It's too soft. It's not rigid enough. And I'm surprised the kits didn't get crushed. Um, and then nothing else has changed there with manufacturers. Um, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo, least for the worst engineering. Yeah, nothing else has changed really. They've got border in there for the worst packaging, border for the manufacturer listens the least, border for the worst instructions. Don't get me wrong, I love border models kits. Um, that, that Stuka is still my favourite ever model kit build I've ever done. I absolutely love that model and the, the Lancaster is just gorgeous. Um, it's, I, I love that model to bits. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just awesome. So there we go. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I was going to say. Yeah, I've also got Das Work and Takum in there on the worst packaging as well, because as we all know, they tend to, I mean, Das Work is basically Takum, and um, they just chuck everything in those, those wrinkly end opening bags and they just chuck everything in the box. And the boxes are generally quite soft. Uh, you know, if you look at the, um, we've got the uh, the Stug, which I've still yet to finish. I've got the uh, the Panzer III down there, and we've also got the SDKFC251. They're all the same size box. They're all really soft, um, and the sprues are quite tightly packed in there, so quite susceptible to damage. So that was all I wanted to say. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was, um, obviously, my overall favourite release, um, Airfix Gannet, because it was such a surprise, just such a lovely surprise to see that kit so beautifully made with such you know hardly any sink marks anywhere it's got a couple of little tiny marks on a couple of the wing surfaces and that's it um but it's just beautifully molded and when i did the review i compared it to tamia and i never thought i'd be doing that they are really really good but i've also added um the qatari spit and the icm tarhai into my um overall favorites for 2023 just because the Qatari Spit is such a beautiful, beautiful model. And the ICM Tare also is a beautiful, beautiful model. It goes together really well. Unfortunately, it's lacking detail in the cockpit. But um, when we actually think about that kit was developed in a bloody war zone. Um, you know, I've also got them in now in my most improved um, uh, manufacturer. Because you think, you know, you look at ICM kits from 10 years ago and you look at them now. I mean, God, awesome. And they're in a bloody war zone as well. So amazing the other thing i just wanted to say um diagostini um a lot of people have been asking i don't know if the if if Ed, uh, edward where did edward come from if youtube of um promoting those videos or something i don't know but a lot of people are asking me about the diagostini mustang the one six scale huge thing that started uh we had pack one which was parts one and two we had pack two or part two which was packs three four and five and then it just stopped got an email to say that there'd been some issues or whatever logistical issues or something and then I've heard nothing since so the last video you saw was when the last pack arrived and there's been nothing since other than an email so um somebody who shall remain nameless contacted me and said that they have known Diagostini in the past to drop something if, if the subject doesn't sell well in the first couple of packs they drop it so I don't know I have contacted another couple of companies regarding part works and we'll see what comes back from them so if you are a fan of part works and you want to see me do one then um there will be one coming hopefully um and we'll see so thank you for watching uh what's that bit that's just under 10 minutes so that's okay um but i just wanted to clear that up because qatari i am on their rent reviewers list as i say and they deserve all the recognition they can get because i think they're absolutely awesome they really are good you know, Richard Alexander's there heading things up and he is an amazing guy. He's an amazing kit designer and he was heavily involved in the Lancaster. I mean, how beautiful that is. So I'll see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.